Hello everyone, welcome back. Last time we did the introduction and character creation for Kilena, a half Kilean lady. She's at the beach just after having washed the shore. All she has are rags and she knows she'll have to find something to wear and maybe even weapons to survive. A bit of the beach combing yields a few scattered items that have fallen off passing ships. It's not much, but beggars can't be choosers. Let's not make any bones about this, she was a beggar. Speaking of bones, a little further up from the beach, she discovered that she wasn't the first person in this cove. The pick spoke of a scavenging or mining adventure group, and the headless skeleton spoke of danger. The ruin, just like in the vision. Yes, she'd seen it before, in her dream. She couldn't help but feel a pang of apprehension. But that cart in those crates didn't look very ancient. Wait, what was that noise? She swung wildly, desperately hoping to hit something. Good thing she'd found this knife. But the rats have made her real again. Luckily she wasn't going to pickpocket anybody. The bloodstains confirmed that this was a dangerous place. While the tent and the other skeletons confirmed that this was an organized group. That sword would be useful. Longer reach than the knife, but not as heavy as the pickaxe. She was still ragged, but things were a touch better. It seemed like this group had come in by the sea because there didn't seem to be any other way to leave this place. The only way to find an answer was to enter the temple. The stonework was intricate. She didn't know what the patterns meant, but then again, she'd never explored a ruin in Nairim. But even farmers knew of the old ones, the civilization that had preceded them all. It was hard to terrorize from the glowing bronze contraption. All knew of the wonders the old ones had accomplished, and how they'd been cast down for their hubris. She tried to look inside, but other than the fact that it looked magical, she couldn't tell what it was. She thought it was bronze, but she knew a bit about metals, and looking closer, this wasn't bronze. It seemed harder, and felt cold to the touch. This must have been the fate of the scavengers. They must have fought amongst themselves for the loot, and ended themselves. That didn't look like any key she'd ever seen. The glowing contraption didn't have anywhere to place the key though. She'd seen this, in her dream. Only fleetingly, but she'd seen it. On a hunch, she tried the key. It worked. Just bats, thankfully. Her nerves were on edge. But better be ready just in case. The corridor led to a crossroads. The glow down the left path was hard to ignore. She felt a hot flush and dizziness as she got close to the crystal. The infection from the rats must be affecting her. Yes, that must be it. This looked like a council chamber of some sort, but the room was too ruined to infer anything. She grabbed everything she could and ran out, but the crystals were definitely the cause of the dizziness. This fever was nothing like she'd seen before, and didn't feel that bad, but she'd need to watch out for the crystals and avoid them. 
The passage to the right had a pedestal of some sort. There were scraps of the same metal as the glowing contraption. She didn't recognize the impression on the pieces, but she collected everything she could. They were clearly from the old ones, and were bound to fetch some money. Lockpicks were more practical though. Hopefully she wouldn't need them to escape, because she barely knew how to pick her own nose, let alone a lock. The cobwebs thickened the further she went into the ruins. The spiders. The question was, just how big were these spiders? What were these spiders eating? Either there were more scavengers ahead, or monsters even worse than these spiders. The question was answered when she entered the next room. It was a reservoir of some sort, and some hapless wanderer had set up in it. Judging from his skeleton, he hadn't died too long ago. An Aberita too. Maybe a mage? Gilena figured that a mage would be useful when exploring ancient ruins. Maybe this moss was edible. <laughs> or maybe not. The corpses in the light, they were gone. This was the room she dreamed about. The room where people had been burnt to a crisp. In her dream, the people had been fleeing. But try as they might, they could not race away from the searing light. The stone head was also vaguely familiar. Part of it was the wavy patterns etched into the stone, but the face, the style of the face, it stirred a memory in her she couldn't put a finger on. Something had come through that door. Something. She repressed her fear and stepped through. This machine, why does it seem so familiar? The dream, of course. Just like the chamber before. Just like the stone with the keyhole. But she'd never been here. Why would she dream of this place? She wasn't even from Enderol, nor did she know any tales that spoke of this. Why would she dream of something she couldn't possibly know anything about? The parts looked like metal, yet it also resembled stone. A strange mixture of the two. There was a strange mushroom on the upper side. These mushrooms are present in Nairim too, and each gives you a permanent bonus to your carrying capacity. She felt good, stronger. The drainage was the only exit out of this room, but at the end of the corridor there was an ominous light. She hoped it wasn't the same searing light. She cautiously peeked around the corner but breathed a sigh of relief. It was just a water wheel. But just how old was this place? The ruins looked much too old to have a functional water wheel. The searing light must have reached all the way here. This corpse attested to that. But how had the water wheel survived? Or maybe it was built much later? That meant people must be near. Looking around, she saw no exit. But a series of gears suggested that there was more to this. She engaged the gear and turned the valve. That seemed to do the trick. It was good to see sunlight. Hopefully this was the way out. He saw a shape stir near the far wall. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good.
Luckily, it was slow. She could barely dent it before it reformed, yet it hammered at her with great force. Hopefully, it wouldn't follow her outside. Sunset, just like in her dreams. Maybe this was just another nightmare and Sirius would wake her up yet again in the ship's hold. For a brief second she considered pinching herself, but she knew it was pointless. This was no dream. Yes, she'd been cast off from the ship. Yes, she was penniless and barely knew what she was doing. No point denying it, she'd just have to get used to the situation. There were more ruins jutting from the cliffs, and clearly spoke to what had been an extensive complex. She was able to scamper over to one of the more complete buildings, and discover some gear that a prior explorer had left. Much better, unless she was clothed and had a shield to protect herself with. But she was still much too weak to go around cavorting in spider infested ruins. I don't think you can come back to this area later, but there's nothing of significant importance inside these ruins, so I'm going to skip them. But if you're a completionist, you should go in before you leave this area. It seemed to Kalena that the only way down was by the bridge and tower she'd seen earlier. That didn't look like the other monster she'd seen, but it was big and hairy. Where are you going? I'm over here. Well, that was deadly. Kilena reminded herself to keep an eye out for traps. The way level ups work is similar to Skyrim. You choose to upgrade the same stats, but also get learning and memory points. Memory points give you perks. Learning and crafting points allow you to increase your skills. Crafting points allow you to increase the workmanship skills, and learning points applied to combat skills. You have to use books to increase each skill. You'll find some throughout the world, but the majority will have to be purchased from shops. That means the money regulates how far you can increase your skills, which is different from Skyrim. You also have experience points. They give you levels, which in turn give you points to spend. So the two key aspects that gauge your abilities are experience points and money. There's also Arcane Fever. It increases when you use healing spells and healing items other than food. You can still use all other magic, just not healing. Gameplay wise, this serves to make you take better care to avoid damage during combat and to make items like food more useful. These corpses were not so much charred as desiccated. The glowing symbol was clearly magical. Touching it sent tingles through her body, but it wasn't unpleasant. These symbols are collectibles that give you a small amount of free experience. They're usually found in explorable locations. There had been other explorers here, and they stashed a few things. Maybe the troll had them for dinner, so the goods were never recovered. Yeah, don't step on that. She'd picked up a few books, and this was a nice safe place to read some of them. She increased her ability with sword and bow and absorbed the ability to cast basic healing and fire spells. 
the ruins continued further down the path to the bottom of the valley. But she saw movement down the walkway. Yes, a wolf. They had those in their room too. It almost felt welcoming to see something she could relate to. Looks like another poor soul had been exploring the ruins. The poor sod had run afoul of the wolf. Whatever her feelings about looting the dead, this vagrant had some gear that she desperately needed, including a book to teach her a spell to absorb health from enemies. She looked out into the valley below. She wasn't the naked castaway she'd been at the beginning of the day, but night was falling. But she had to find shelter and maybe even people to help her. She briefly considered going back into the ruins, but who knew what danger would find her inside. One wolf had been tough. The pack below was best left alone. Towards the waterfall, she found more skeletons in a freshly dug grave. She took the goods but was careful not to disturb the remains interred within. She wasn't that barbaric. But the wolves sensed her. That howling made her skin crawl as wolves leapt at her. She retreated into the deeper parts of the river and took advantage of her longer legs to slash at the wolves. It was a hard fought struggle, but she managed to slay the pack. Not without cost, however. She was direly wounded in the struggle, but at least the wolves hadn't been rabid. Luckily, she stumbled across a sweet smelling tree, and its nectar invigorated her. There was a small camp across the river. It must have belonged to the scavenger who'd been killed by the wolf in the ruins because the items were not old enough to belong to the skeletons she'd come across. A touch better now, she didn't know how to best use this armor, but at least it would give her some level of protection. Closer to the waterfall, she came across another one of those ice claw mushrooms. It was quite dark now. As she gazed up at the ruins, she wondered who the mysterious figure had been and why she'd been brought here. Was this punishment from the gods? Or maybe a dark joke from her father? She stopped feeling sorry for herself and set off again. In the distance, she saw another waterfall and along the way discovered a strange glowing plant that resonated like a chime. Surely someone would pay well for this. Hmm, that was not a waterfall. Technically it was, but it was also a dam. Another scavenger camp, but this one had a live person. She thanked the lucky stars and stepped into the light. Now would you look at that? I knew I'd seen someone scrambling in the mountains. What brings you here, my dame? That's a long story. Where am I here, and who are you? Who am I? Finn Deliris, apothecarius by my path. Pleased to meet you. And you are at Sun Coast, in the south of Enderal. Where are you from? Uh, but wait, don't tell me. I know that accent. Nerim, isn't it? I... There we go. Everything's locked up. At least for the night we should. W wait a second. Who's that? <sighs> Just an adventurer on her way. No reason to worry. No reason to worry? For heck's sake, Finn! How do you know that this girl isn't with the bandits? You said you'd call me if anyone showed up. And now you're st standing here, having a chat with her as if we were in the bathing house of Ark. Lo and behold, we are still alive. Now, is there anything else, Carbos? <laughs> I've got my eye on you. Touch any of our stuff and you'll regret it. Unbelievable. <sighs> May I present 
Carbos, as he lives and breathes. Sorry about that just now. That's just how he is. In any case, if you don't need any more help, I'd suggest you move on. Follow the way east behind the dam house. It'll lead you to a village called... Uh, Riverville. Ah, here, take this. Truth be told, you don't look so healthy. Your eyes... <laughs> ah, well, whatever. What about my eyes? Hmm, there's something... Mm, peculiar about you. I don't know how else to say it. I would examine you myself, but we don't have the right equipment with us. So, if I were you, I'd ask a priest in Riverville to have a look at you. Who knows? Maybe you caught something in that temple. But why are you here? <laughs> us? Oh, nothing spectacular, I'm afraid. We gather herbs, but tomorrow we're going back north, to League. <sighs> You should stop by one day if you're in the area. Someone who scours Pyrian ruins and survives could surely be useful to the apothecary and help us find some things. Can you tell me more about this region? Well, what can I tell you? This is the Sun Coast, in the south of Enderal. A pretty peaceful area, except for all the animals and bandits that have recently started going crazy. And, well, that's pretty much it. I think you should ask the people in Riverville if you want to know more. They certainly have some stories to tell. You know, there are places that I should be mindful of. To an adventurer? <laughs> if you ask me, what you need before you adventure anywhere is some good old-fashioned shut-eye. But yes, there are some places. The Three River Watch, for example, right there below the Stone Arch. It was once an old trading post, but now it's full of ooh, shady characters. Ah, and there's also a big Pyrian ruin south of it. What do you mean by your path? <laughs> by the Black Guardian. You really are an outlander, aren't you? My path is... Well, it, it's just me path. My role designated to me by Malthus. A kind of calling, if you will. So you're assigned professions by the gods? Uh, not exactly. Malthus designates our place in society. Generally the same one our fathers and forefathers occupied. I walk the path of the Eridites. And there's also the Manufacturers, the Sublimes, and, of course, the Pathless. Within these roles we are free to choose a profession, but certain Vocations that are available to an Eridite are not permitted to a manufacturer, which is one path below. However, below does not mean that it is in any way inferior. Everyone on Enderal does what they do best. And who would know better than the gods what exactly that is? But are you happy with that? In the folly of my youth, I might have thought about it, yes. But then, I realize that half of what goes wrong in this world has to do with the desire to... advance. I am interested in living the righteous path, and to contribute to the preservation of my people. That's enough for me, and only the faithful will be granted the eternal paths upon death. And if you don't have a path? Men or women who have never received the path consecration, or those who have broken their path. Brigands. Glimmer dust smugglers, murderers, well, you know. <laughs> and over here, there's a rumor that the Golden Queen has a weakness for men in gowns. Seriously, be careful with that kind of gossip. I know you don't mean any harm, but there are a few who might consider it heresy. Maybe. But, if I look at other countries, even within the civilized world, it's hard to find a people as peaceful as ours. Thank you. Don't mention it. I wish you a quick recovery and safe roads. Walk blessed. Carbos, do we need the stilt? Or can I clean all the tools? Place is Finn, I'm playing. Don't bother me. <sighs> I guess that means no.
The Faber hit her like a boulder, and she stumbled in dizziness. Hmm? By the righteous path, what happened to you? You look as if you've met the Black Guardian himself. This Faber, do you know what it could be? Fever? Well, um, <laughs> there could be many causes. Wait a moment, I think I still have some grunt root. That should be enough to ease your pain, at least for now. Take a seat at the fire. The warmth might help you. Oh, so now we're brewing potions for complete strangers. Well, if the strangers are about to die of fever, then yes. There was that oath we swore once, remember? To help the afflicted, to... Whatever. Thank you. Don't get on my nerves. This Kaba's character wasn't the friendliest sort, was he? But then again, they were in hostile territory, so he was probably justified to be wary. Gruntrude, Gruntrude. Ah, here we go. So, let's see. Sheer cap, some water, ha, done. I can't make any promises, Shit. but... Finn, the still. Explain. Ah. Finn, ha, ha, ha. Do something, damn it. Do something, oh. No. Oh, sod it. Do I really have to watch every step you take? That was a fucking close call. Uh, hey, I'm sorry, all right. We'll pick up a new one in Ark. Yeah, and you're paying for it. Here I thought this bloody day couldn't get any worse. <sighs> this day isn't getting any better. Here, drink this. It'll help you. Thanks. See, you already look a lot better. Still. You should let a priest take a look at that fever as soon as possible. The grunt root portion will wane in a few days. But what happened there? What? You mean the still? Bad quality. And too much heat, I'd wager. But, eh, whatever will be, will be. But explosion? Uh, explosion? I'm not sure I follow. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Finn Dallaries. Died in 8234. Cause of death, exploding still. Ha ha. Look, I really don't know what you're talking about. Maybe... Wait a second. What was that? Hmm. I could have sworn I saw something moving over there. Oh shit! Uh. What the? Carbos! They've hit me, Finn. Those bastards. They've hit me. Uh... Carbos, I. Do something, damn it! Do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Knocked out by a magical explosion. Again. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.